you know this guys, um, I've not got it in me, I'm too mature to do a jump scare. <laughs> 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 do you know why I don't do jump scares? Because people will like play or the tr die. The truth, it's only a matter of time before I meet somebody who's on the edge. <laughs> a pacemaker or yeah. a bit jumpy. That's a one star I'm not ready to accept. <laughs> so I'll leave jump scares to everybody else. This here is a muscle. It's one of the most recognisable. In fact, a long time ago, in Edinburgh, I used to come into this graveyard. Uh, we used to do seances. In fact, see at midnight at Halloween, Sam Hewan, a lot of people believe the veil between this world and the next is at its thinnest. And to me, what that means is this place at midnight at Halloween is filled with drunken goths. <laughs> and I was one of them. And we used to come in here at night time and we do seances. If you know what a Ouija board is, you might be able to see the letters carved into one of the oldest, spookiest, visited mausoleums in the world. So they would carry out seances here. You used to be able to walk in a long time ago. There's now a padlock on the door. The reason we have a padlock is because when I told you about the homeless trying to find somewhere to sleep, 1999 a homeless man can't find anywhere. And for the first and last time, he walks up to the mausoleum, pushes the door and walks in. There's not much to see. All the mausoleums are the same. If you know how they work, you also know that there's a gate. Concrete floor and a gate. And if you lift that gate, you would see steps. And this is where the homeless... <laughs> anyway, bars to you there. This is where the homeless man goes. He starts to take the steps down beneath your feet. This is where we realise maybe he's not looking for shelter. Maybe he's looking for something to steal because he walks over to the first coffin. George McKenzie and he places his hands on the coffin and he starts to push. Maybe he thinks that it works like a door and a hinge, but it's closed, the casket. He starts to push and the table that it's on starts to rock. The story goes that the coffin falls, it breaks, McKenzie's exposed. The homeless man gets really scared. I think it's because of all the cold air trapped in the coffin. Uh, it spooks you out, it's too dark to see anything. But he jumps, he jumps back onto terribly weak wooden floorboards that just give way. And he falls another five feet into darkness. And he doesn't know what you know. But below our feet is just thousands of bodies. He's panicking, he's grabbing at the soil trying to climb out and it's bones but you can't see. At the same time we had a groundskeeper. The groundskeeper is not like the police. He's just here to make sure there's no one messing around with the stones. He's checking all the tombs and because no one ever touched this mausoleum, he did what he's done always. He never checks either. He just walks past. And as he walks past, in a night just like this, he hears the doors go, they open, and the homeless man falls down the steps. Ripped clothes, soil and bones. The groundskeeper turns around and thinks, it's actually started to happen. It's only a matter of time, a beard have started to rise. It's happening, so he turns and he runs, screaming out of the graveyard. The homeless man, the only sensible one out of the two of them, start to scream himself. He jumps up and chases the groundskeeper. The two of them running all the way into the street. Professionals. It takes the police a few days to help find them. Not to punish anyone. Just to make sure they're okay. That's how we know the story. The homeless man said quite a few things that were interesting. One, that he felt followed ever since. He also said that he got a birthmark. That he never got a birth on his chest. It was red three red stripes. There's a book written by one of our kings that taught us how to identify a witch and what to do when you find them. It's a book called Demonology. It'd be unfair for me not to be honest. That mark that, that homeless man talks about is in Demonology. When I said that I used to come here when I was very young, I wasn't joking. We all did. We used to come to Mackenzie's Mausoleum and you would knock gently on the door just three times 
and the short version is Bloody Mackenzie, come out if you die. Would anyone like to prove that they don't get spooked out by ghosts? <laughs> Feel a presence, don't pull them away, come on up. This is your time to get rid of. If there's anyone you ever wanted to get rid of, now's the time, come on up. Would anyone like to step up? Everyone, there's always someone that wants to step up. There's I've, always someone. There's I've always already been scratched, I ain't doing it again. Yeah, it's I've already been scratched once. No one coming up? Goodness. You do it, Glenn. Me do it? Yeah. I have to come here every night. There's not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing ever happens if you don't do it. <laughs> Let's try and keep concrete underneath our feet for the last time. I'll meet you guys round at the front of the pub. So this no no not yet. So this is Mackenzie's mausoleum. Uh, we're outside now, and uh, I don't know, you probably can't see anything through there. In fact, I kind of hope you can't. To be fair, um, but yeah. So we were stood outside it, um, finished the ghost tour, went back to the hotel, and uh, I was covered in scratches uh, on my back, and the wife promises me it wasn't her. So I promise. I I swear to God. I swear to God, three scratches and it was not me. You look really <laughs> creepy. <laughs> too bright. Nope. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Um, just, if we come down here, because we stood in this one, didn't we, love? Can you just put the torch in here a minute? Nope. This is where that... This is where we stood in this Well, I'm not saying this is where it was. We've got a crypt here, or some sort of burial area. Um, apparently a lot of um, homeless people come and sleep in here at night, but apparently it's so cold tonight that it's not going to happen tonight. Uh, quite a sad thing to think about, actually. Okay, so a little bit different, like I say, just thought I'd uh, share something with you like that. And I apologise for the night vision, I'm sure it's a bit creepy. We've got an old camera because it's so hard to get decent night vision stuff now um, at a sensible price. So we've got an old camera, an old Sony camera, which has done the trick perfectly. Um, oh my goodness, look at that. Oh my god, I thought it was a person. Okay. That is scary as Mr. Poodles. James and. McDowell. Okay. Anyway, back to what, back back to what I was saying. Um, so, what was it? City Explorers tours. Yeah. City Explorers. Look for the yellow. L yellow umbrella. umbrellas in Edinburgh. City Explorers. They do it all over the world. Um, can't recommend them highly enough. Absolutely brilliant tours. They are free walking tours. You have to book them, and then you just give them a donation at the end of it, depending on how much you enjoyed the tour. I would obviously imagine you would love it because they are great, a lot of information, they do all sorts of tours, not just ghost tours, they do um, film tours and all sorts about Edinburgh, um, and this is not an advert for them, but I do recommend that you take out at least, Our tour guide was at least, sorry, I'm a little bit worried, because over there is like a white, um, <laughs> I don't think so, it, it looks like a body in a bag, but it's just sand. <laughs> which absolutely oh, sca scared the life out of me. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, take take these tours. These tours are great. People that know a lot of local history. Um, and they share it, and it's really good information. Whether you believe it or not, uh, you know, just take it in as entertainment. Um, and if you do believe it, take it in as information. Uh, but I'm going to leave you there. Um, be safe. Don't get squashed or mashed. 
Uh, I don't spend all night in graveyards without a torch at least. And I will catch you on the flip side if I make it out of this graveyard. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs>